guess, tell us kind of how the Dillingham deal came together. Did you see that as a real option? Kind no, of right it's, it was, we had, I think, three or four guys we thought um, could be uh, long-term uh, foundational pieces. And we didn't have much, you know, to go off of. We didn't want to touch our, um, our, our rotation guys coming off the season. So we were, um, you know, we were trying to find creative ways to kind of get there. And we think um, the Dillingham's explosiveness and his playmaking, I think he's a, you know, he's a heck of a playmaker and his ability to play both um, on and off the ball Kentucky this year was, it's hard to replicate that skill set. Um, we we're looking for guys who could break the paint, they could play a little bit faster, they could create for themselves and others. And throughout the process, our eyes just kept getting drawn to Rob. Um, and, you know, we were, um, Calling all around, see if we get something done. We didn't. We weren't too optimistic when the night started, and um, we're lucky enough to to obtain a pick, and we get a get a kid that we think can really help us. Have you ever seen or been a part of a trade like that, getting a top ten pick for a for a pick that's seven years from now? No, um, no. But you know, it's you know, San, San Antonio and, and those guys are, you know, really really bright. So sometimes you want to spread the picks out. You don't want to have too many picks at once. So I think it's a it's a win win trade, and um, uh, again we. we we were trying to address certain things this offseason, certainly bench scoring, uh, ability to create for themselves and others. Um, Finchie talks about all the time, breaking the paint, breaking the paint, playing in the paint, playing with a bit more pace, and all those attributes are really um, hallmarks of Robert's game. In terms of where you see him fitting in, do you see him fitting in right here from day one? Yeah, for sure. Now, I don't think you make a move as aggressive as this and, and sit on him. I think uh, and Finchie was, he, he's the best, and you know, I haven't talked to you guys so excited for his extension, but. Um, Finch and I watched him two days ago in his office for a long time, and you know he, he was as excited as we were. So he's a guy that, from from day one, is going to have a role, responsibility. Um, certainly, it's going to be hard for him, but I don't think you, you're that aggressive in the top ten with a guy you don't think can play right away. With the breaking the the paint, like what does that do for the rest of the, the players to inject that into your team to have a kind of bucket getter guard? Like what is that going to do for the surrounding pieces on your offense? Yeah, I think what was really neat watching Kentucky, especially him and um, him and Reed Shepard, and I believe the roommates, it was cool to watch those guys effectively play off each other. And, and Kentucky was scoring like an NBA team in the second half of the season. Um, you know, I think sometimes you, you look at a guy, his size, and he's diminutive, and um, you think he's just a bucket getter. You know, he passes more than he shoots in pick and roll. I think he's a very unselfish guy. His per 36 assists are really impressive. So, um, and his energy is, is uh, infectious. So he's going to play fast. you got to play fast with him. At 19 and 165 pounds, how much are you going to have to protect him or basically do something with him on defense? Nah, it's not going to protect him. We're going to challenge him. You know, we're not, we're not here to hold his hand. I mean, he's a very competitive guy. There's been plenty of examples of guys that are slight, that are, are plus defenders. Certainly, it's, it's not easy when, when you um, lack elite positional size, but you know, he, he's an unbelievably competitive guy. Everybody we talk through from, from high school to the people who grew up with him, to Kentucky, to... OT to Donda, competitiveness is one of his hallmarks. So we're, we're going to challenge him. We're not going to protect him. Tim, you talked about him contributing right now. You're coming off the Western Conference Finals with this core. How important was it to stay in that win right now mentality with this group? Yeah, I think we're there. You know, you know obviously it's going to be extremely challenging, but we're returning seven of our core guys. We're hopeful to bring, you know, we're hopeful to bring um, other core guys back. You know, free agents is going to start soon. But um, we felt we're there. Either way, but we challenge ourselves this off season. You know, how do we get uh, more athletic? How do we have more shot creation? And to be brutally honest, we didn't think we could achieve those things in the draft sitting at 27. Um, and the way the night broke and the the way the calls kind of developed, um, we were unbelievably excited to get a guy that uh, you know we think is as talented as anybody in this draft. Is that how do you see uh, Shannon fitting in? Too? Yeah, he's another downhill guy. Nine, you know, nine free throws a game. I think he's a three position defender. The off, the the off court reputation is sterling. We talked to the coaches at Texas Tech, talked to the coaches at Illinois. They don't, they don't say good things; they say amazing things. Um, obviously, he was um, on the wrong end of, of a really unfortunate situation, and his ability to to play through that and play winning basketball for you know a great coach and Brad Underwood. Um, we just think he brings toughness. I think he's an unbelievably competitive guy. He's got size. He's another downhill guy. Another guy that's going to play with pace. Um, you know, you don't. You don't take those two guys thinking how they're going to match up together. But our challenge was to try to play a little bit faster over the second unit. And I think we got two of the fastest, most athletic and aggressive guys in the draft. Tim, with, uh, with Shannon Stroud, did you do any 
extra kind of digging into that? When you we did, yeah, we did a ton, and it was. You know, I think it's a, I think it's a shame that it's even a footnote. I think it's a shame that, say, it was a, it was a, acquitted, and it's. I think it's if, if you really dig, it's it's a really unfortunate thing for a kid by, all accounts, and every relationship is a great kid. So, um, oftentimes, you know, you're, you're, the minute you're accused, you're found guilty, and. Um, thankfully, he went the legal process. He he chose to go to trial because he knew he did nothing wrong. And um, I just think it's kind of it, it's a shame he went through that. And I think it's a testament to his who is the kid and his ability to kind of um, play through obvious uh, really tough distraction. You talked about the pessimism to get up to get a guy like Rob at the beginning of the night. Is that because maybe like a perceived lack of ammo that might be required to get there? Yeah, I mean we're approaching a different financial reality, and we really want to keep our core together. And again, we want to. So we want to bring back our own free agents. So, um, and because of the Rudy trade, we're not we're not chock full of uh, picks. So um, we we were not optimistic at all. Again, I think um, I think it's going to be a win-win trade for San Antonio. They draft a great player in Castle, obviously, with Wembenyama, and they can kind of spread out their pick inventory. Um, so um, we, we found a, a, a partner that maybe both timelines align. And um, but if you'd ask me at six o'clock, can we get Rob Dillingham, I said, I don't think so. Do you Is think it? that this um, move can get your offense going by scoring in transition mostly? I mean, that's the easiest way to bump up a 17th or 18th ranked offense. Yeah, I think the ability to spread the floor, again, play in the paint. Um, and I think he he's a really, really unselfish player. He's a very – he was able to play both on and off the ball last year. A lot of these guys kind of with his profile have struggled without the ball. He didn't struggle without the ball. And he's – like competitiveness is something that is a hallmark of his. So, um, any 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 time you can add a shot maker that that's quick and he doesn't play like he's a buck sixty eight. You know, he's he's fearless at the rim. Um, so I, I do think the playmaking will probably surprise a lot of people when you look at him and he's flashy and he plays fast and he's you know, he's a pull up sh- three point shooter. But I think the playmaking is is underrated. I think it's something that Finchie will really help develop and and we're so fortunate to have him learn under Mike Conley. You know. Can you throw him into the deep end and have him be like the point guard of the second unit? Yeah, I know he's going to play. Yeah, I think he's 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 going to play. He's, again, we were pretty aggressive and we gave up a, a pretty valuable asset. He's not, he's a guy that's from day one is going to give him the opportunity. Obviously, it won't be. He's got to earn to keep that yeah. opportunity, but we, we traded for him to to play right away. Tim, does that take a commitment from ownership to be able to? Make yeah, that ownership play? was was fantastic. You know, certainly anytime you're aggressive, there's financial realities and. Um, you know, we, we think we have a chance. We're at the the big table, so it's no no time to get scared now. You talked about that at your your exit interview about this is you're learning the the second apron and the new financial yeah. realities. How much? I mean, you, you really only had minimum contracts mm-hmm. or, or things that you could add in your own free agents. How much did, did that impact getting yeah. maybe not just one guy but but two guys tonight? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. You know, I don't know how we can add this level of talent via trades unless we want to get off core guys. I don't know how, and we don't have a pick next year. I don't, you know, fingers crossed, we're not going to be um, in 2026 a team that gets selected in the top 10. So, yeah, I think we're still learning and we don't know exactly what it looks like. Um, It's weird right now that we don't have a second round pick, second round right now, that's kind of bizarre, but I just don't, I can't think uh, of any time that, um, you know, you can get that high without losing a core piece. And um, certainly it's a real asset we gave up. It can inhibit deal making moving forward, but knowing the restrictions that you start to enter when when guys rightfully get paid, yeah. um, we just looked at it and we think, how can we get a guy that can be this impactful? Tim, you talked about contain that up top. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, there's there's no value to be honest with you. It's just yeah, I'm very happy, super excited about the season. Just um, you know, we're in this unique time right now. We have everyone involved is great, and ownership throughout the whole the whole crew has been unbelievably supportive and aggressive, but. Um, you know, you're just trying to ensure that we keep this thing going and build off of what well, last year was a, just a super fun time. Tim, you mentioned Rob being able to play off the ball mm-hmm. as, as well. Do you envision him being able to play both guard positions? Do you like him better at one or the other? No, he's a one. Yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a he's a one who's a bucket. But uh, but again, Coach Cal does such a great job. Last year he played with Reed Shepard, played with Wagner, played with Reeves. And I think what jumped out at us is sometimes, again, the guys – who look like him at first glance tend to play selfish basketball or were dribbled on make quick decisions. He's a quick decision maker, and he, um, I think his IQ is is elite. And I, the, the playmaking, not just watching highlights, but really digging in the analytics. It's we, we were 
kind of really impressed by a guy that can balance that you know, 15 points a game in 21 minutes, six assists per 36. Um, in pick and roll, he's more apt to pass than shoot. Um, the more we dug, the more impressed we were. Hey, Tim, we did, with uh, Finch getting his contract done too, like what kind of was the motivation behind wanting to even extend that out further and how'd you guys just go about getting that done? Yeah, I think organizationally, you, you strive for continuity and this organization has struggled with that forever. You know, when you have a good thing, you, you keep it going. Finch and his staff have done a wonderful job. Then you guys get a bunch of guys to be head coaches. Hopefully someone's smart enough to hire Mike soon. So um, I'm a big believer in continuity and, and our ownership is very, is very much a big believer in rewarding a job well done. So, you know, we have a core group that's committed and it's locked up. We have a great coach, great coaching staff. And if you can ensure those things are in place, you know, you can't ensure wins and losses, but you can ensure the type of people that you have working together. And I think we're all kind of tethered to, to the same goal. And it was kind of a no brainer when you look at the success that we've had. And each year we've gotten better and better. Uh, Finch is, is not just a great coach, he's a great guy. Um, and you, you want to reward all those attributes. And again, continuity is this. I think of my face as Carl seen. You know, he's finally seen the same faces for several years in a row. And I think it wasn't accidental that the success we had last year was for, to some degree because of the continuity. Do you also think like that with the roster <coughs> has a good environment for two young guys to come into and just like be accepted, you know, help yeah, develop I mean, and learn? And We've talked, again, we were, there was a handful of guys we were really aggressive with in this draft, um, specifically behind Mike. And I think all of them were envious, not just of playing with Ant, but to learn behind Mike. You know, Mike's um, an elite starting point guard, and he's he's such a giver. You know, um, a lot of vets um, are can struggle with being a mentor. Mike loves it, so I, I couldn't think of a more uh, conducive environment to growth than where we have right now with Finch and his staff behind Mike, next to Ant, who's just getting better and better. Um, so I I, I think um, we're lucky, but I think Rob's lucky as well. If Tech. this bench is different next season that seems like what would be changing here with this or maybe in free agency if this bench is different in the ways that you want it to be what does that look like next season i look like we're trying to create more easy opportunities we're trying to play a bit faster we have elite athleticism in anthony and Jaden and nas and at times um and and those guys have to take the challenge at, at times we, we play a bit too slow so um you know finch is a huge a huge proponent of space and pace getting out early getting out often and, and finding easy opportunities and I think you're also trying to find oftentimes a diversity of skill set between your starting five and your second five. So, um, you know, we, we want our second unit to be the best defensive second unit in the league. We're not going to, again, not going to take shortcuts or protect guys. But um, we do think we could get a little more athletic and create easier opportunities where the pressure to score was, you know, wasn't so daunting at times. So, so pick tomorrow. You still have a pick tomorrow with what's on the docket tomorrow, how it's tomorrow. I don't know, man. This is, like, weird. I don't know. Um, <laughs> We had Derek Falvey um, was hanging with us tonight. We talked about several days draft. We had Quezzy here yesterday. We're like, tell us about these multi-day drafts. <laughs> um, yeah, we don't know. I mean, we're excited about 37. Um, you know, we're excited the flexibility that potentially allows us. There's we got a handful of guys that have first round grades that are still on the board, but it's kind of uncharted. Usually, this is two hours later, and we're all exhausted, and we're working on two ways in Exhibit 10. So, um, I'm not really sure. Talked about. No value in the opt out. You know, I think fans will just be like, I don't know, is he going to leave after this year or yeah. anything? So, is like your long term view, like, I am here? And is yeah. there a situation where ownership plays out where you're like, no, I don't know? No, I mean, I'm here. I mean, that's, I could have opted out. So, I think that, that speaks I'm very happy here. Um, it's become home. Obviously, love the guys we work with. Now, there's Derek right now. Um, so, it was just, you know, you, there's a, a situation right now that there's a bit of a known, and anytime you can kind of. Be, Ex extend the flexibility when there's a bit of a known. I think it's probably wise, uh, but it's certainly not reflective of, I mean, I'm ecstatic to be here, and I think we're going to have as good as the year we have this year. I think we'd be that much better next year. When it comes to just kind of forecasting the free agency, mm -hmm. you know, do they have this week tonight? Does that mean relatively quiet free agency for you guys? No, I mean, we, just, we, we still like to retain our guys. Yeah. That's our goal. We want to retain our guys. Now, the market will impact that, but like, again, I'm I'm a believer. If you have a good thing, you keep a good thing. Um, so we'd like to, we'd like to come back largely looking the same. Maybe a little, a little variance in the roster with these new draft faces. But we really like what we have, and we like what we're building. So I think the more guys we come back, the better. So that's the goal. You, uh, you've been a guy in the past has had guys who can kind of provide that really scoring punch mm -hmm. off the bench, and Finch has kind of preferred that too. It seems like, 
how nice is it to have somebody in like Rob who can maybe kind of give that when it wasn't necessarily on the roster in the past? I mean, all you're doing optimally, and, and it's rare to achieve anything optimal, is like, all right, we have this, we don't have that. So, you know, we, we, have, like, we have a lot of good things, you know, the, the success in the playoffs, the regular season, but we lacked probably a guy besides it, like, just go get it. Um, so how do you get there? It's free agency. We have limited options of free agency. Um, trades, you know, the guys that have value league-wide, we don't want to trade them. So it's, and then you're trying to get creative. Um, we thought he was the best shot creator in the draft. So, you know, he, he was a focus. Um, there's a couple other guys that we really liked. And we thought, hey, if we get one of, one of these three guys, even though the give is, is, could be um, aggressive and it could be a lot, I don't know how we can achieve that next two or three years via free agency. We don't want to trade our core guys, so um, you know, don't want to. It's pretty simplistic, you know, and it, I think we've checked a major box that we lacked last year. Thanks, Tim. Right, thanks, guys. Thank thanks.